case. Um, so good morning everyone, um, my name is Alan Thompson, I am from Leak Australia and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, how you can use AR and IoT to enhance your industrial equipment. Okay. So um, a little bit about Leap Australia, uh, just for those of you who don't know us. Um, so we're an engineering software solutions provider. So we sell a range of software on the engineering front. Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, software from one of our main vendors, PTC. So PTC is an American uh, software company based, at, or based in Boston, I should say, they just moved. Um, covering uh, CAD, uh, product lifecycle management, service management, uh, IoT and augmented reality. Okay, so I guess my role at Leap, uh, I've got a long background in the PC space. Uh, I manage the PC tech team that we've got uh, around the country uh, dealing with those products. Okay, uh, we also look after um, Ansys. Uh, so Ansys is the world's largest simulation software company that covers uh, full multi physics simulations, so structural, thermal, electromagnetics, combinations of all of the above. Okay, and uh, we deal with a range of other um, software vendors as well covering things like uh, crash and blast simulation, and uh, materials handling simulation, injection molding simulation, uh, fatigue simulation, lots of simulation, okay, uh, software. So that's that's a little bit about Leap and what we do. So uh, we've got a long relationship with RMIT, they've been using our software for a long time, I can't remember how far back it goes now, um, but, uh, so obviously we're going to see some of that each day at the AMT as well. Yeah, RMIT is that. So, um, I guess one of the things that uh, there's been a lot of talk uh, out there in the industry these days is around uh, digital transformation or digital convergence. Probably hear that from a lot of different people. Uh, I guess PTC's take on that is really around uh, you know what does that mean in terms of uh, the physical world, the things you've got out there in the digital world. Okay, so what's been happening is you know pretty much every day um, everything's designed these days in CAD, potentially managed through a PLM system. So that's we, we print out digital models and we produce them in the physical world through our manufacturing processes, whatever that might be, and we end up with our physical things, right? So the next step where IoT fits in is to then uh, take those physical things and build loads and loads of sensors into them and start capturing information digitally about that, okay? And again, lots of people have been doing that for uh, quite a long time now. You know, it might be under things like um, control systems to monitor, uh, monitor environments or pieces of equipment. People use, uh, use lots of different terms I've discovered over the years uh, in terms of how they call these things. Uh, but what, uh, what a lot of people talk about is creating a digital twin. Okay, So I've got a, my physical system out there in the real world and I've got some sort of digital twin that shows me what's going on with that in my control room or whatever it might be. Okay, So that's really what we're talking about with the convergence. And, uh, what does that affect? Well, it affects everything, okay? So it can affect uh, how we design our products. So more and more products are becoming uh, IoT connected or, or smart products, okay? Our smart TVs, fridges, all those sorts of things, you know, consumer appliances, uh, but loads of other things as well out there, okay? Uh, probably the focus of my present today, uh, presentation today is really gonna be about smart manufacturing or industry four, as we're calling it in Australia, okay? Which is really, I guess the next step above sort of the traditional industrial automation tools, <coughs> monitoring tools and control systems, okay? And it can also help us on the side of connected service. So the, the ability to monitor, uh, understand what's going on with our, with our equipment out there, maintain that, uh, track what's happening with that, okay? So there's lots of opportunities with this technology in all these different areas that cover uh, industrial use. So, you know, what's really driving that? There's a whole lot of factors, but uh, some of the big ones, the workforce, the changing nature of the workforce, okay? We've got a lot of expertise out there that is reaching retirement age and about to leave. How do we capture all that knowledge and transfer that, okay? So like it says there from Deloitte, you know, over the next two decades, the global workforce is gonna see the largest exodus of any generation, okay? So there's a lot of knowledge that's about to walk out the door, okay? So how do we, how do we capture that in this shrinking workforce? One of the big drivers is around uh, efficiency and profitability. Okay, as there's more and more competition from uh, from global uh, global producers, we need to basically uh, get that cost reduction down in any way that we can. Okay, and there's different ways to do that. An example there from uh, ITIC around reducing downtime and what the cost of that, and revenue and customer satisfaction. Okay. 
So, you know, customers are expecting a lot more these days. You know, I don't just want it in black, I want it in every potential color on the, on the spectrum, okay, as a simple example. So yeah, we talk about things like mass customization, the ability to respond to customer demands, and then when we get into the service side of things as well, how do we, uh, how do we service that, keep our customers happy to make sure they're gonna come back? Okay. So these are some of, the, some of the big drivers out there in industry. So uh, I'm gonna jump a little bit here and talk about, uh, I guess I wanna talk about the platform that, uh, that we're gonna be looking at today. We're gonna see at RMIT and, and how that fits into this, uh, this scenario, okay? So on the, uh, on the industrial innovation side, of, uh, what PDC and we offer is a, a platform for ThingWorks. So ThingWorks is really around uh, rapid application development of industrial applications, okay? Covering a whole range of options, okay? So we're gonna look at some of this today, uh, but really what we're looking at is how do we gather all of that information that's out there? We've got our smart products out there. We've got all of our machines out there on the shop floor, all the PLCs and control systems that are running them. And I wanna understand what's going on with that. Now lots of people, you know, have various systems to maybe log stuff into a database and gather that, that's great. And uh, I think a lot of people come to us with this, I've got 10 years of data from my PLC sitting in a historian database, what can I do with it? Okay, that's a really common question. I see a lot of people nodding because you're probably in that situation yourselves, okay. So one of the things is to get, get that information, first of all. How do we drag all that, those bits of information into our system? So. Now, there's lots of different sources of information. So that could be from um, our connected products we just talked about earlier. You know, we've got our smartphones, our smart fridges, they're all got sensors in, they're streaming data away. How do we gather that information? Or maybe we're buying something off the shelf. Maybe we're buying um, a, a power pack from, uh, from Bosch or something like that, and that comes already hooked up to Azure to stream all that data there. That's becoming a lot more common as well. You know, machines stream data straight to the cloud on the vendor system. Okay, so maybe we need to grab not just the data from the machines themselves, but maybe from their database where they're writing stuff to, or their cloud-based system where they're writing to. Okay. Uh, we've got lots of information about the stuff we do in our business systems, in our ERP system, in our MES system, in our CRM system. Okay. So you probably track your service call-outs somehow, hopefully, okay, in a system. So there's a lot of information contained inside that. Now that's disconnected from other systems that you might have. Okay. So the ability to grab data from those systems is important. Okay, uh, probably the, fo the focus of my presentation today is really gonna be around the factory operation side of things. Okay, we've got all of our machines out there, PLCs, other things that I've mentioned before. How do we understand what's going on from there? How do we gather that information? Maybe those systems are writing into a database at the moment. Maybe we wanna grab that information from the database to actually understand and react to that information. Okay, or we might have other systems. Our CAD system, our PLM system, our BIM system any other digital databases, right? Companies love creating databases, okay? Let's create a database and store this information. Then the question is, well, what are we gonna do with that information stored in that database, okay? And really that's the idea of the, the thing with platform is to gather that information and then start making some sense of that. So we can start to build a bit of context around that. We can say, okay, here is my, you know, here's my smartphone thing that I've created. So it's got some CAD information, it's got some, uh, maybe some sensor information that might be streaming back to my, to my home base, because I'm Apple Watch, I'm monitoring what's going on with me, as I walk around, okay, as well as Facebook and everyone else. Uh, I have you know, information on uh, you know, units and stock cost price and all that sort of stuff as well, bill of materials information, you know, there's lots of different sources of information for that. So it's to gather that all in one place and make some sense from that, okay? And then we can start to look at, well, what does that data tell us, okay? So we can start to synthesize and analyze what's happening with that. You know, it's one of the big drivers uh, in artificial intelligence, is how do we deal with all of this data that we can now gather? And how can we make sense from that with machine learning? So we can start to look at things like maybe simple uh, anomaly detection, right? Here's what's normal, now it's running not normally. Let us know about that, okay? Without us having to spend a lot of time monitoring that. Maybe we can start to look at more predictive models of, okay, based on what's happening now, we think that the service interval for this is now gonna decrease to six months instead of 12 months. Okay, so now we can get out there and do something before this thing breaks. Okay, and we can start to run other simulations. So uh, on the answer side, uh, so PC and Answer have been working together to build, you know, physical simulations of this. Okay, so you know, Answer is the world's largest simulation software company. We can take all of that data from our 
sensors, build our model, and start to feed that into a model that we prep to say, okay, with these loads and, and this temperature, what's going to happen? So run a full multi-physics simulation to work out, well, this is what actually what's going to happen to your product based on those conditions. Okay. And then based on that, we can start to respond. This is one of the big things, how do we how do we respond to this? Right? We've got all of this data that we gather, okay, but what uh, what industry four is allowing us to do is to react to that more in real time. Okay, we don't wait until the end of the shift when the operator tells us what's going on or they fill in the, the card of what's been happening. We're reacting from the sensor information as it happens. Okay? So we can start to orchestrate some responses. You know, this thing is running too hot, let's do something about that. Let's so let automate the local service call, let's make the machine run slower, whatever it might be that we need to do. Okay? And then how do we present that information back to the users? How do we engage them with that? Okay? So we can create some sort of dashboard or mashup to, to view that information, which we'll have a bit of a look at, or we can present that information through AR. There's another way of doing this. Okay? So that's really sort of a, a very quick overview of what the, the ThingWorks platform is, what it covers. Uh, as I said, what I want to focus on is really on the, uh, the factory operations side of things, okay? which I believe is really what most people in this room are interested in. You know, how, do we, how do we deal with our control systems and everything else we've got out there? Okay? So um, a part, sorry, uh, a part of that is you know how do we how do we talk to all of those factory pieces of equipment? Okay, we've got a whole range of control systems out there, OPC servers, PLCs, whatever else that might be. How do we gather that all that information? Because they all talk in different languages and different protocols and everything else, so SCADA systems and whatever else it might be. Okay, so uh, part of that industrial connectivity. Uh, from PTC is a, is a product they have called Kepware. Some of you might be familiar with, with the name. It's been around quite a long time. They're around about 20 years on the industrial control side of things. Um, so the idea of Kepware is really to be a single solution for gathering or aggregating uh, all of your industrial operations data. Okay? So the idea is that basically your Kepware server can talk to all different sorts of devices. Okay, so there's a huge library of, of drivers, uh, plugins supporting thousands and thousands of different devices and sources. So basically, we'll talk through, you know, um, to your PLCs, to your OPC servers, to your databases, whatever else that might be, to your sensors and actuators. So uh, in terms of accessibility, you know, the common ones that we see a lot of people uh, talking about or asking about, things like OPC UA, is a, is a big one at the moment, uh, MQTT, ODBC, REST, these days, SNMP and lots more protocols. Okay, if you go to the Kepware website, there's pages and pages of protocols and things that we talk to. So the idea is this is really a tool to be able to talk to all of those pieces of equipment that you have out there, all of those sensors and devices that are commonly used in, in industrial settings, okay, and gather that into one place. Okay, so once we've gathered that into one place, then we can start to do something. So from a Kepware perspective, we can just store that in a database and with all the things people like to do, right? But we can go beyond that now, we can start to pass that off into ThingWorks and then start doing all those other parts of the piece, okay? We can start to analyze and respond to that, present that information back to the users, okay? So on that front, okay? So here's a customer example. So this is a uh, company out of Europe, TSM. They make uh, plastic uh, materials handling equipment, the precursor to your injection molding, okay? So uh, what they're providing to their customers is the ability to, in real time, get a better understanding of what's happening with material costs and quality, the stuff that's moving through their devices. Okay, so there's loads of sensors inside that, but traditionally that hasn't been well understood. You know, what am I actually feeding through this? How do I react to that? What's the impact on quality and things like that, okay? So TSM have gone and rolled out, thing works, they're using Techway to talk to their pieces of equipment, and they're providing a, a dashboard or a mashup to their customers to say, hey, here's what's going on then better insight to understand what's happening with those pieces of equipment that you're using and the material that's going through that. And actually, it's kind of quite related to what we're going to see downstairs uh, here at the, at the AMP. Okay? So they've gone and used ThingWorks to build their own custom UI that they then give to their customers to monitor and understand what's happening with their equipment. Okay? So that's, that's one way to do it. Uh, what a lot of people want to do though is they want to get started a little bit quicker and earlier with that. Okay? So on that front, if you don't want to go off and build uh, a UI and build something yourself, then PDC also created the manufacturing apps. Uh, we're not going to see them here today because at the time, uh, RIT didn't have manufacturing apps up and running, so we're going to see more the, the, the 
the, uh, the ThingWorks UI built, okay? But the manufacturing apps are really to uh, basically give users, uh, you know, based on a role, uh, real-time, uh, actionable information to the operational data, okay? So that can cover things like our production advisor. So as a plant manager, what you're interested in is your production performance. So things like your, uh, your OEE, what's happening with all the pieces of equipment out there, how efficient are they running, uh, what the downtime is, uh, what production or scheduling issues might be, based on what your machines are telling you. Okay? So the, really, the big idea of these is real-time information based on what the machines are doing. Okay? Uh, or our assets. Okay? We've got all these pieces of equipment out there in the factory. What is happening to that? Real-time monitoring of the status of them. So that could be things like Whatever, whatever fields you want, temperature, vibration, all of that sort of stuff, let's monitor that and then let us know if something's going out of, uh, out of normal range okay, in real time. Okay? So we can see a history of that. And the last one is the controls advisor. So for the controls engineer, you know, what you want to do is understand that your network is up and running, that you've got your connections to all the servers. You know? We were talking to a, a company recently who was saying that you know, they've got a problem with their system where you know, they had something go down in, uh, in their US manufacturing site, which basically meant production globally stopped. Okay? So they really need to monitor that and change that system around. That's one, that's one of the things they're looking at. Is how, do they, how do they monitor that in real time and react to that a lot faster than you know, something going down? Okay? So <clears throat> let's have a quick look at uh, what they look like. Okay? So, so, okay. all right. So this is um, this is an example of what the manufacturing apps look like. Okay. So the idea is I presented with the UI to give me uh, particular uh, access to the bits of information I'm interested in. So from a controls engineer perspective, I can go to the controls advisor. And I can see here are all of my uh, my OPC servers right, that are running. Okay, so I can have multiple servers connected up. I've got a, a simulator running, so I don't have a real machine, a real factory connected to the back end of my laptop here. Okay, so I can see you know, basically how is it going? What are the alerts? <coughs> how many devices are connected? What's the status? How many tags or little bits of information, data streams, am I feeding through into that into that server? Okay. So the idea is to be able to aggregate all of my different OPC servers together into this one UI. And at any point, go in here and see the status of them all. Okay. If I want to dig in that to a little bit more detail, I go into the server details so I can start to see that everything's running normal. Okay. My last device discovery, my current tag, what's the trend in that? So at the moment, everything seems to be running pretty good. Okay. So that's the idea from a controls perspective, you know, what do I want to see and look at, okay? All right, from an asset perspective, I want to monitor my assets and see what's going on with them, okay? So I'm going to my asset advisor. So here's a list of all of my assets that are running, okay? So I've got quite a lot, uh, 50 assets out there. They're currently filtered by uh, status, okay? I can also uh, sorry, sorted by status, I should say, not filtered. I can choose to filter them down to say, show me all the ones with unplanned downtime or with warnings or that are unavailable. Okay, so I can scroll through that and see all of my machines. So I'm, when I create these machines, I go through a basic GUI. Here's a picture, here's all the information that I want. I've already connected them to Kepware. So I've already got the tags coming through to say what I want to do. So if I go and look at my, uh, my CNC turning, it's currently unplanned downtime. Okay, so it's a uh, whatever reason, that's based on a tag that the machine might have sent, code, whatever it might be, okay? I can look at the monitored properties of that, okay? So currently, the current, the temperature, and voltage that it's using, okay? So I can see it's been in a warning state for the last six seconds. I can see where it's located, okay? Come back down, if I look at my, say my sinking EDM, down here, Okay. So again, I can see here's my syncing EVM, it's running okay, and it's got a warning on, something's gone wrong. 
as well. It loads for that, so I need to go and look at the properties and see what's happening with that device. Okay. So the idea is it provides me an out of the box way to build a UI to see and understand what's happening with all of my pieces of equipment out there in the field. Okay. Alright. And the last one I want to show is the is the production advisor. Okay. So I can go to the production advisor to see what's happening with my uh, production equipment. So I can see uh, my lines broken down. Okay, so I can scan that to see the equipment. I can see what the uh, OEE is for the whole line, for the whole factory or the whole machine, depending on my, my uh, conditions. I can start to see its availability, its status summary, all of that information that as a production advisor, I want to know what's happening with that. Okay. So the important thing is really, as I said before, that this is all about gathering that information in real time. Not waiting until the end of the shift, you know, the old whiteboard up in the up in the break room where people come back and fill in stuff that's happening. Okay? We react to that from the sensors on the device in real time. Okay? So if I want to, I can go and configure things like alerts. So I can turn on alerts, so I can just simply go to the machine. You can see here I've got things like uh, I've got a high vibration or high temperature alert. Okay. Um, the source is on the laser cutter, when it started, what the definition is, how long it's been running for. I can have it configured so that my system will send an email or send me a text message to let me know, hey, this is happening. So I can react to that straight away as soon as it starts to go out of range. Okay. As you can see, I have been doing a very good job of monitoring what's happening and responding to that. Okay. So at a very basic level, that's what the manufacturing apps are about. Okay? <coughs> Basically providing you with a very quick, uh, easy to deploy UI to monitor your pieces of production equipment and your systems. Okay? Uh, so it's an out-of-the-box UI to, to build. Obviously, if you go to the full ThingWorks platform, you can build whatever you want, your own UI, which we've got customers who've done that. They've gone, yep, that's great, but I want more than that. I want to look this way or whatever else it might be. So they've gone down that path as well. Okay. So that's a very quick look at uh, at the ThingWorks manufacturing apps.